Hi, I'm Patricia from Patricia's Lovely Creations, and today we're going to create a mosaic pendant or two. And here I've got some chopped up pieces of already baked polymer clay. And I'm going to show you real quick how to make these. And you can do whatever color you want. I'm doing all pearled colors. Um, here I don't have any silver yet, so I'm going to do some silver. And I'm going to add that to my collection here of chips. So I'm just going to give me a little bit. Don't need too much. A little goes a long way. So you're going to want to roll this out on about a setting 2 on your pasta machine. Sizing it up with what I got. Make sure what size I need. Okay, now I'm just going to cut this down a little bit more. Like I said, you don't really need that much. Uh, that looks good. That'll give me a little bit in a baggie. And I'm just going to take and bake this in the oven at 275 for about a half hour. Should be good enough because we're going to rebake these anyway. Okay, now that's out of the oven. And I'm going to take my smaller blade here. And I'm just going to start cutting this up. I'm going to spit it up so it's not so boring for you. Um, just showing you how I cut them up in the little chunks. Um, do them all different shapes and sizes. And as you can see here, they're really pretty easy to cut up, so it really don't take that long uh, to cut up a good chunk. And you can probably even use less than this, but I like having this stuff around for this technique, and maybe at some point I will use them for something else. You never know. Um, might come up with another tutorial or another way to use these. I got a few ideas, so you never know. I might come up with something else. And that looks like that's going to do it. So here I got me a tile, put my white sheet on, and I'm going to cut that out with my shape I'm going to use. And I have this rolled out on a setting zero, I do believe. I would probably go a setting one, maybe a two, because my my depth was a little bit off, so you might want to go a setting one or a setting two. Pop that centerpiece out of there. Now I'm going to take me some uh, Sculpey Bacon Bond. You can use liquid polymer clay, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to spread that on the pendant. And I've sped this up. And I am using quite a bit here. I mean, you don't want a ton of it on there, but you want a pretty good amount that is, you know, going to hold your pieces. But you don't want them running off the edge either. So, not too little, not too much. So now I'm just going to take my pieces and I'm just going to spread them out around my tile here. That way I have easy access to all of them. And then we can get started on placing them on the pendant. Okay, now that they're all spread around the pendant, I've got me a little wax pencil here that I'm going to use to pick them up. Um, you can use tweezers, whatever you happen to have on hand. And I'm just going to place them anywhere that I feel happy about. 
And you can arrange them any way you like. Keep a little bit of space in between each one. You can do a little space or a lot of space. This is your creation, so do it any way you like.
and here I'm dropping in my last piece, making sure I have it situated where I want it with my tweezers here. That looks good. Now I'm going to pop it in the oven at 275 for a half hour. Okay, and here we are out of the oven. And it's cooled down, and I'm going to take some hand sanitizer here. And I'm going to clean off my hands before I touch my white clay. Um, I just like to use this method to make sure that my hands are nice and clean and lint free before messing with my white. So this is what I do. It's a Scott's blue towel is what I'm using. And now we're going to soften that clay and put it into the extruder. And I'm using the smallest of my rectangle uh, cuts here. Um, I tried the, the medium one or the big one first and that was not right it was way too big way too much but here I'm going to put on some more uh, bacon bond around where I'm going to be putting this and then I will start laying in my little piece here. Um, I started in the corner. Um, I probably shouldn't have. I should have started in the center and then and blended the seam there. Uh, just putting it in the corner. It was very noticeable. But that's where I started my corner or started my wrap. And I really shouldn't have put it there. I should have put it in the center. So if you're not following along with me, I would put it in the center and then blend the seam. It would have been much better for me to do it that way. All right, I got my little exacto knife here, which I will use to cut the end piece off here, line it up. In the corner as best I can right where I need it. Cut off that excess there and be a little bit easier. Sorry, I keep going out of view here. I'm just trying to line it up, figure out where I need to make my cut. Alright, I got something on there I'm trying to get off there. I know facing this way it looks all right, but it really wasn't. You can really see the difference. So yeah, I recommend probably doing it in the center of it and matching it up at the top center where your cord's going to go because you're not going to see it anyway instead of doing it in the corner like I did. Just trying to get them to match up better here. Okay, get it ready for the outside edge here. That should do. Take cut that off. And I'm going to apply the baking bond around the outside edge as I did the inside edge. I'm just going to put a little bit on the tile and then brush it on. So I'm doing it a little bit different than I did. Okay, I got my edges all covered in the baking bond. And now I'm just going to start at the top 
trying to keep that as straight as possible and hopefully from falling off. I'm trying to line it up with the back of the clay too to make sure everything is nice and even. I want that laying straight. I don't want it tipped or anything like that or any wonkiness to it at all. Make sure that it's all nice and even. See, this is why I said earlier you may want to roll it out on a setting one or a setting two. Okay, back to where I started, so I need to get my X Acto knife and cut that. Move that seam out as best I can. And we're also going to be putting a backing on the back, so you don't need to worry too much about if you didn't get it even because you're going to cover that anyway. Now that's going to go in the oven, 275, and I bake that for a half hour. Now that it's out, and we're going to mess with white again. I clean off my hands using my hand sanitizer and a blue Scots towel. And there you can see the other pendant that I made. One more squirt, make sure it's good and clean, and then we're gonna get our white clay out, and get it all nice and soft, and we'll start back filling this with the white clay. And I just take and I push it down. And uh, you know, like any of the idea for this tutorial was I seen one somewhere on YouTube. I can't remember where, but she made a real mess of it using liquid clay and pushing the pieces down into the clay instead of using like the liquid clay or something like that. Uh, and I just found this to be a lot less messy, quicker, no fuss, no muss. So. I thought I would do a take on her tutorial. But yeah, I don't remember who it was that did it. It escapes me now, but I found this to be a lot less messy back filling with just regular clay. Just softening up is all you need and pushing it down in there.
Okay, now we're ready to do the back. After I filled in the front, the back filled all that. Um, I'm gonna put on the backs. So here I'm doing it with the uh, smaller pendant. I'm just take and flip that over, and as you can see here, I totally forgot to put on my bacon bond. Um, that's okay. I'm pushing it really hard down into the clay, so I don't think it's going to hurt it. So I just take and press it on there, smooth it out, and then start pinching it and pulling over the edge. This is what I'm doing here. And I believe I have these rolled out onto a setting two. Um, you could probably even go a setting three. They come out quite thick. So you could probably do a setting three on the back, even. So, yeah, just pulling over that edge. Trying to smooth that out. Just pull in a pinch. I'm going to get my little sponge here, and I grabbed the wrong one, that's got some blue in it, so I'm going to have some blue flecks in my, my backing, but that's okay, I'm not too worried about it, um, so I grabbed me a, a new one here, new sponge, and I'm just putting some texture in that, and I'm pressing pretty good, so just make sure I got everything all evened up and textured just how I want it. I keep going over it several times as you can see here. Okay and that's about done so I'm going to pop them in the oven at 275 for one hour. So this will be the final bake. Now I have them in my water and I'm setting them with my petty wand. And I'm starting out at a 400 grit. I will do 400, 600, 800, um, 1,000, 5,000, and 10,000. And then I will buff it with my Dremel. Um, but yeah, I'll go through all the grits. And mainly just trying to get the white here off of the uh, the front of it. Where we're left with all them beautiful colors showing through. And I will also put the link to the Petty Wand into the description box below. So make sure you look for that. So you can uh, figure out where you can buy it and can make it into a uh, sanding tool for your Palmer clay. All right, all done with the sanding. Now I'm gonna take my Dremel here and lightly go over it and buff it out into a high shine and try not to drop it here. But uh, yep, I'll make it into a high shine finish on here. Um, the other one I'm just gonna do on my jeans, just kind of give it a light buff by using my jeans. Uh, to go for a more satiny finish. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you here in the light. You get that nice shine. 
the colors that the probe plays in there are just beautiful. This one here, just do it on my jeans. That looks good. A little bit brighter there. You can see how that silver just sparkles in there. I love it. So one high shine, one just a satiny finish there. And now we will put these together. Put my cord through. And I measured that at about a 21, I do believe. Blue hair, uh, well bond, and um, you can find that over in my uh, Amazon storefront. And my lid is totally stuck though, so I have to open it up to get the glue out. Just open it up, take my uh, toothpick here and spread it on there. Pop my end piece on. Now it's a little messy here, but just wipe off the excess with my finger. No big deal. Now I'll do the same with the other side. Grab some on my toothpick, rub it on that end. Pop my end piece on there. If you notice I cut my ends at an angle, it's just so much easier to get them in there if you cut them at an angle, rather than cutting them straight. So they go on so much easier if you cut them at an angle. If I haven't mentioned that before, that's why I do that. Set that aside. Now this one here, I'm going to drill a hole through the sides. And I'm going to use my uh, cord on those. So I've got my drill. I'm going to just start the hole there, flip it to the other side, try to line it up. Go through that side, trying to meet the other side, flip it back around, go through that hole that I made. Trying to fill my way through. Here we go. That'll do it. Okay, so I've got about uh, 17 and a half inches of my cord here. And I will have that also, I do believe, in my Amazon storefront. Okay, here I got my findings out that I need. And we'll put this puppy together. So I'll start with one end. Put my uh, Charlotte on. Grab my pliers. And I'll pick up one of the crimp beads. I'm just going to put 
that through there. Crump it. Making sure it's good and tight. And then give it a good tug. Make sure that it's nice and secure. Take my pliers and I will close my Charlotte. Making sure the holes line up. And the same thing for the other side. Pick up my Charlotte. Fight with my cord. Put my Charlotte on the cord first. Grab my other crimp bead. Crimp it closed. I'm going to turn it over to make sure that the other side is just as close as the front side. So, put a good tug, making sure it's all nice and secure. Close up my Charlotte. Making sure it's all even. And close it nice and tight. Now I need my jump ring. Up my jump ring here. And I totally lost it somehow. Don't ask me how I did that, but I sure did. Okay, so I grab me a new jump ring, open it up, grab my end here. Put it in there and close up the jump ring. Make sure it's nice and together. So I'm going to grab my smaller jump ring, open it up, put on my claw clasp. Everything keeps wanting to jump out of my hands today. So put that in there and close that up. Making sure it's nice and secure. And there we go. Okay, now that this one has dried a bit, I'll grab it and put this one together. Much in the same way as we did the other ones, um, but I like to use a bigger jump ring um, for these with the uh, bigger ends on the end. It's just easier to get a hold of, I feel. So I like to go for the bigger ones. I believe it's I believe that's an eight millimeter jump ring is what I'm using there. So I'll put that on for my other jump ring, which I believe is a six millimeter. I might be wrong, it could be a four, but I'm pretty sure it's a six. Put my claw clasp on there, put that on there, and then close it up. There we go. All done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. There we go. So here they both are. Nice and beautiful. So if this tutorial was helpful to you in any way, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I also have a Facebook group. 
Pictures of his lovely creations, and I hope to see you there. Thanks. Have a great day. And don't forget to ring that bell.